the only well here I am again with the chance for each of our couples to win up to ten thousand dollars and if any of them say the secret word they'll win an extra hundred dollars this is the this is the word right here oh, the duck is getting smaller on it okay duck duck out of here <laughs> George who's first well Frankie McCauley is waiting to talk to you Groucho and our partner is a special guest, one that I think you'll find quite interesting. He's Chief Nino Cochise of the Apache tribe. So, folks, you can in, please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you see every day. <laughs> chief, I'm glad to meet you. Thank you. You're not the chief that runs from here to Chicago in 39 hours. Huh? <laughs> uh, and you a Pocahontas? <laughs> Frankie McCauley. Uh, Frankie McCauley. Well, you're a very attractive girl, and I'm very happy that you're here. You're a very famous fellow, Chief. Haven't you got your own show on, on TV? Well, that's uh, my grandfather, actually. Uh, they're portraying his exploits from about uh, 1864 to 1878. Uh, well, what was your grandfather famous for, Chief? Did he manufacture the Indian motorcycle? No. <laughs> But he almost chased the white man out of Arizona, though. You speak very good English for a foreigner. Uh, <laughs> and I, I find that uh, rather unusual. I thought all Indians just said, how? Well, uh, most white men are surprised when they find an Indian that has a uh, good command of English. But fortunately, I majored in English in uh, Carlisle University and also in the University of Washington State. Oh. Your name is... Uh, Frankie McCauley. Frankie McCauley, huh? Mm -hmm. Are you related to the historian who wrote the famous... Uh, his, My his, husband is. Is related to him? Yeah. Oh, is that so? Are you related to Rose McCauley who wrote Told by an Idiot? No. That's uh, really my biography, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is your hometown, uh, Frankie? I was born in Pensacola, Florida, but uh, my father's been in the Navy for practically all of his life, and. We moved all over the place, and I don't really have a hometown. You just kept moving? Yes. Well, my family, we had to keep moving, too. We never had the rent. <laughs> is your father still in the Navy? Yes, he's uh, is Admiral R.S. Clark, and he's stationed in Corpus Christi, Texas. Oh, your father's an admiral in the Texas Navy, eh? <laughs> hey, he's a very important fellow. Texas has the third largest Navy in the United States. <laughs> Are you married, uh, Frankie? Yes, and strangely enough, I married a man named Johnny. Oh, well, what's so strange about that? Well, Oh, uh, Frankie and yeah. Johnny, you mean? <laughs> well, how did you meet Johnny? Uh, coming out of the Malamute Saloon? <laughs> no, I, I met him at a friend, uh, a girlfriend's house, and, mm -hmm. and I just, oh, I was fascinated because he said he hated girls, and, uh, well, it, it sort of, I guess it's like reverse psychology. And, I see. You know, when a, a boy kisses a girl and um, she says, stop, usually she means, stop it, I love it. And it was sort of like that. You mean when a girl says stop, she really means don't stop? <laughs> Boy, the nights I've wasted. <laughs> I was always so gullible. <laughs> Seventy-three. Really? Seventy-three years old. You've hardly got a gray hair in your head. Mm -hmm. Are you chief of all the Apaches? I'm chief of the Chiricahua tribe and representative to the other four tribes. What are your duties as a chief? Well, I usually uh, put all my duties off onto the sub-chief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How long have you been chief? Well, ever since I was 16 years old. 67 years you've been chief? Uh, my father and I went back to Washington. He died back there. And I rode all the way back to Arizona, horseback, and became chief. 
You mean when you were a young buck, you traveled all the way from Washington to Arizona on horseback? That's right. You couldn't do it today, Chief. A buck today doesn't go nearly as far as it used to. <laughs> well, how are your people getting along? I imagine you have problems on the reservation, just as we have in L.A. Do you have any particular worry as chief? Or you have... What well, is your chief worry, Chief? I have uh, one worry in particular. My worry is, is that right at present, I'm trying to get a bill up that I might be able to get some redress on lands that uh, were taken from the Apache during the wars, which we feel belong to us. Well, I'm no expert on these matters, but I would certainly think your people deserve a better break than they've received. An Indian chief must lead an unusual life. Could you give us a rundown on some of the highlights of your career? Well, uh, right now, I'm uh, writing a book on my past experiences, which uh, will be called Echoes of the Past. And uh, I remember the time that uh, I was with uh, Bill Cody's Wild West show. We toured Europe at that time. I was a sharpshooter on that show. We went broke in Paris, just about the time of World War I. Well, being broke, no place to go, I figured out it was the best thing for me to do was to join the Lafayette Escadrille as a pilot, which I did. You, the grandson of Cochise, flew a fighter plane in World War I? That's I right. bet those German pilots were surprised when they saw arrows coming into their cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you done much flying since World War I? Well, I uh, flew uh, 68 missions in a B-17 bomber in World War II. You say you were a bomber pilot during World War II. Weren't you pretty old by that time? How old did you tell him you were? Well, I told him I was 45. Mm -hmm. Why'd you tell him that? Why didn't you tell him the truth, that you were around 30? <laughs> well, I told him I was 45 because the truth was I was 60. Is this really true? This is true. Chief, you're an amazing man, and if the government doesn't buy Arizona from you, I'll have Frankie's father drag out the whole Texas Navy the first thing in the morning. <laughs> Put it there, Chief. Is that a promise? That's a promise, yes. Yeah. Well, you're an interesting couple, and I suggest you get together now and make heap big medicine because you're going to get a crack at a lot of money. Now, remember your partner, so one answer between you. Now, from our list of 137 categories, <laughs> you have chosen Mother Goose Rhymes. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Who was the boy who kissed the girls and made them cry? What's his name? Georgie. Georgie. Georgie Porgy. It, it sure was. Georgie Porgy. You have one right, three more right, you'll have $1,000. This is Georgie Porgy right here. <laughs> oh, are you ready? Who stole a pig and away he run? Oh, oh. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, stole the pig and away he ran. Dan, no, Tom, little Johnny, little, uh... Little Tommy. Little Tommy. Tucker? No, not Tucker. No, no. Oh. Well, it was Tom, Tom, the piper's son, stole a pig and away he ran. You were flirting with it. You now have one wrong. Don't get the next one wrong or the game is over. All right. And who was the man who couldn't eat fat? Jack's pretend Jack's fat. Huh? Mm -hmm. Jack's fat. Jack's fat. <laughs> You're back on the right track. You have one right now. Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of what? Rye. Would you say rye? Rye. Rye. Four and twenty blackbirds baked in the pie. And right. you have two right now. <gasps> what did Peter Piper pick? A pepper. Pe peck of pickle pepper. pepper. That's right. Peck a peck of pickle pickled pepper. pepper. Three right, one more right, and you'll have $1,000. What is the next line after hawk, hawk, the dogs do bark? Park, something park? Uh, uh, the dogs do bark, it's getting... In the, it's getting... Dark, in the dark. No, that couldn't be right. Uh, park, hawk, 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 the dogs do bark. bark. Well, it's the beggars are coming to town. Well, that doesn't rhyme. Hawk, hawk, the dogs do bark, the beggars are coming to town. Some in rags and some in tags and something, and some in gingham gowns. Don't get the next one wrong or the game is over. All right, bye baby bunting, where's daddy gone? 
Hunting. 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 He knew that because he was an Indian. Oh, <laughs> well, you're back on the right track with one right. In Mother Goose language, what are little boys made of? Oh, snail. Snail and puppy dog. Snail. That's close enough, yeah. <laughs> Two right. Where was uh, Simple Simon headed when he met the pieman? Was he going to the fair? Mm-hmm. Going to the fair. Yes, yeah, some in rags and some in tags and some in velvet colors. Get the next one right and you'll have your thousand dollars. In one, two, buckle my shoe. What's the rhyme for five, six? Pick up sticks. Pick up sticks is right. The beggars are coming to town. And you just picked up one thousand dollars. That's four in a row correct. Well, you've won a thousand clams. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at 10,000. So go over and sit down and think about it. If we don't see you later, thanks for being on the show. How? <laughs> Groucho, we have uh, Jen Jackson and Larry Bomer waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your best of your life. <laughs> Say to see the lawyer, and you each get an extra $50. It's common way. It's something you'll see every day. Jackson and Larry Boner, eh? Joe. Oh, Jen. <laughs> Jen senses more of you than there is of your partner. I'll start with you. Now, where are you from, Jenny? I was born in Los Angeles, California. How long ago was this when you first descended on L.A.? <laughs> 32 years. 32 years. How'd you get the name Jen? Is that short for Jennifer or General or Jenny or what? No, actually, my, uh, one of my husbands gave it to me. It's sort of a nickname for something I don't know. You say you got this name from one of your husbands? How many have you had? Five. Mr. Bomer, if I were you, I'd beat it out of here while you're still single. <laughs> you ought to beat it out of here even if you're married. Five husbands. Well, uh, give us a rundown on this male harem you've corralled. <laughs> for example... <laughs> for example, tell us about number one. Uh, do you remember him or don't you have total recall? Oh, yes, I remember him. I was in high school and he was a college man and... Uh, College man? And you were in high school? Sure, he was a college man. None of the high school boys would handle me, so I married him. <laughs> How long did this idyllic marriage last? Well, only three weeks. I'm <laughs> three weeks? What yeah. happened? No, well, money and uh, strapping around and things. Wait a minute. You said the thing. <laughs> All right, How do you duck. do? Oh, little angel. This is a duck. <laughs> Anything that comes down here is to me as a duck. <laughs> now, you said the secret word, which is, I don't remember, what was it? Uh, what was the secret I word? I don't know, but give me the money. <laughs> money. Money was the secret oh, money. word. So you get $50, and you get $50. Well, thank, thank you, you sir. thank you. And thank you. See, I told you to stick with me. <laughs> this guy's a gone goose, and he doesn't know it. <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> now, Jan, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? No, go ahead. How much do you tip the beam at? You mean how much do I weigh? That's precisely. About 120. <laughs> no, actually, to tell you the truth, I really don't know because the scales only go to 300. <laughs> I know. Well, would you go any further if you were a scale? <laughs> what are your dimensions? Well, I'm six foot tall. 54, 40, 54. <laughs> That'll get down in history along with 54, 40, or 5. <laughs> well, let's get on with this story, which is titled Along the Amazon with Five Husbands. <laughs> How about number five? What happened to him? No, it's still happening to him. I've got him. I've still got him. Oh, well, how do you, how do you feel about him? You like oh, him? Oh, he's, he's a husband to end all husbands. He's a real jewel. I mean, he's... You're the wife Terrific. to end all husbands, too. <laughs> Jenny, I'll get back to you and the Fifth Symphony in a few moments. <laughs> now, your name is Larry uh, Boma. Boma, yes, sir. Boma. Huh? How many times have you been married? Just once. Once? Where are you from, Larry? Originally from Wichita Falls, Texas. Mm. <laughs> have you ever been back to Texas since you fled from there? About 28 times. 28 times? Yes. What is this lure that the Lone Star State has for you? Well, most of them have been made uh, while I was a rodeo rider. 
Oh, you were a rodeo rider? Yes, sir. Oh. Are you still a rodeo rider? No, sir. A couple of years ago, I bucked off a bull at it here, and so I quit. A bull through you? Yes, sir, a bull through me. A bull through a Texan? <laughs> What kind of work do you do now, Larry? I'm a baker. A baker? Yes, you used sir. to be a bronc buster, now you're a baker? Yes, sir. How did you meet your wife, Larry? As a baker or as a <clears throat> bronco buster? Well, actually, I met my wife's horse first. You met the horse first? Yes, sir. A little Palomino filly. Mm, big brown eyes, beautiful conformation, and moves them real trim legs. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't marry the horse the way you did. <laughs> Very few wives can come up to those specifications. <laughs> Jen, uh, Jenny, I forgot to ask you, what does your husband do? Well, uh, he's my manager. I'm a singer and a comedian. And, oh, you're a singer. And uh, oh. of sorts. Is he a good, a good manager? Good. He's the best manager I ever had. He handles my publicity and bookings and everything. Well, he's he sounds like he's doing a great job for he you. He really is. Where, he's are, where are you working now, Jenny? Well, I'm not working right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes number five. <laughs> Warm up number six in the bullpen. <laughs> why, why aren't you working? I'm resting. Oh, I see. I'm building myself up. <laughs> Don't you think you could stop soon? <laughs> Where have you done most of your singing, Jenny? Well, actually, over in Europe, all oh, through Europe. Oh, that's why we and, don't know you here, huh? And the English uh, music halls. I became top of the bill over there. Mm. Well, would you like to cut loose with a song now? Or? All right. <laughs> there. With music, yeah. what, do you, what, what do you sing? What kind of stuff? Oh, I sing all kind of things, but I the, mean, what would you the rage prefer? over there now is, is rock and roll. It's really going, you know? Well, I don't know oh. how secure this platform is here. I put a hammer on it before. Yeah. <laughs> what, about, what song um, do you want to sing? How about Shake, Rattle, and Roll? That's going good over there now. And what key would you about sing? F. F? Huh? Can you... Can you uh, Okay. What about going over there, Jenny? Spread out. <laughs> I'd like to have a little help, though. I'd like to have everybody clap with me. Come on, shake, round and roll. Come on, shake, round and roll. Too. And I saw you on the left side. You there. did. I was trying to sneak there. The audience couldn't see me. I was in back of you. And Larry, don't look now, but I think your last batch of crackers just fell. <laughs> Along with the rest of the building. Well, it was real good, Jenny. I'd like to go on talking to you two, but it's time we get down to some serious business, like uh, winning some money. Yeah. I'm going to play you bet your life. Yeah, and uh, you selected facts about the 48 states from our 631 categories. Now, let's see how well you know your country. I'll ask you some questions. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000 and talk it over before you answer. Did the building oh, shake no. back there, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> you like Fenneman? Oh, I like it. <laughs> there goes number seven. <laughs> All right, here we go. In what state do you find Nantucket Summer Resort? Nantucket. What state is it in? Some resort. You no, no guess. guess. In New York. No, it's Massachusetts. Mm. Massachusetts. You have one wrong. One Don't one get the next one wrong or the game is over. In what state do you find Oak Ridge, famous in atomic research? Tennessee. Tennessee is right. One right. Now, which of the uh, 48 states is known as the Cornhusker state? Talk it over. You said Iowa, I, I said Iowa. No. Well, you're both wrong. It's Nebraska. <laughs> and you're back to one wrong. 
Okay. Now, the banks of the Wabash is uh, which state song? Indiana. Indiana is right. Oh. You have one right now. And on what state? I'm so glad. Look out now. <laughs> Is there an osteopath in the audience? <laughs> in what? In what state do you find the Black Hills? North Dakota. North Dakota? Black Hills of North Dakota. Yeah. Okay. North Dakota. No, I'm sorry. It's South Dakota. Well, you're back to one wrong now. Back to one you were wrong. right on the border there. <laughs> in what state do you find the Grand Coulee Dam? That would be Washington. Washington is right. How many they got? One right now. One right. In what state do you find the highest point of the 48? Mount Whitney, California. California is right. Now they got two right. Right. In what state would you find America's only known diamond mine? Arkansas. Right. How many? Three right. What? Keeps going. <laughs> Here we are again. What state is known as the Green Mountain State? Vermont. Vermont is right. And you got four in a row. Well, I sure did that. <laughs> well, you won a thousand dollars. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back at the end of the show and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at ten thousand. So go over there and sit on his lap and think about it. All right, thank you very and much. And thanks for being on the show. And now, George, what's the story on the big question? Well, our, um, our first couple, Frankie McCauley and Chief Cochise, are still trying to figure out whether they're going to risk half their earnings on a chance of the $10,000. They'll be out in a moment to tell us about it. However, in the meantime, our last couple has made their decision, and here they are, Jen Jackson and... Um, Larry Bomer, would you come back in, please? Look out. <laughs> you won $1,000 so far. Now, if you decide to try for the $10,000 and you fail, you wind up with a total of $500. What are you going to do? I tell you, he answered all the questions, so he doesn't care to go on. Well, so I, right. I believe it's up to him. Well, hmm? that's, uh, you have the right to do that. No. They don't want to go ahead. So congratulations for winning Thank the thousand. Thank you very much. And thanks for being on the show. You God bet your life. You. Yeah. All right, George, bring out the next couple. All right, Frankie McCauley and uh, Chief Cochise. You come out, please, again. You won $1,000 so far. If you decide to try for the 10 and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500. What are you going to do? You want to go ahead? Yes. Mm -hmm. What about you, Chief? Yep. Well, if all the Indians had been as courageous as you, I would be living in Germany. <laughs> you are going for the big money. Now, get together and pick a number from 1 to 10 and then spin the wheel. If any number besides the one you, you pick comes up, this question is worth 2,000. If your number comes up, the question is worth 10. What number do you want? 7. 7? Give it a twist. enough. You took seven and it came up five. This question is now worth two thousand dollars. Is that right? One answer now. In World War II, an American general was captured in the fall of Corregidor. He spent most of the war in a Japanese prison camp. For two thousand dollars, who was this general? Talk it over. <laughs> What's the answer? General Wainwright. General Jonathan Wainwright is right. <laughs> That's right, you won $2,000. Now, what do you propose to do with all that swag? What are you going to do with your money? I'm going to have three babies and get my... <laughs> You're going to have three babies? Well, what are you kissing him for? <laughs> Anyway, congratulations, and thanks for being with us. You bet your life. Thank you.